In this video, we look at the basics of anti-differentiation, and this is the second in a four-part video series on the subtopic of integral calculus. So we're talking about topic five here, calculus in the AI course. And in topic five, there are two main areas. We have differential calculus and integral calculus. So we're now looking at the second of those. Now, in the first video in this four-part video series, we talked about an overview of integral calculus, and we talked about how it's all about finding the areas under curves between two points, a lower boundary and the upper boundary. In the next video, the third video, we'll go into the details of how do we actually find those areas. But in order to do that, we need to understand how to anti-differentiate terms. This is kind of a skill involved in the finding areas under curves process. So this isn't a conceptual video. This goes down into the details of, well, how do we actually anti-differentiate individual terms? So I have a diagram here. And I also have the diagram from the differentiating powers of x. So I want you to sort of draw the parallel that's kind of the opposite. If you're doing integral calculus, you've probably done differential calculus. And when you differentiated, you took one off the power and you brought the power down. When we anti-differentiate powers of x, so if I have ax to the b, where a is just a number in front of the x term and b is the power on the x. When we anti-differentiate, we add one to the power and we divide by that new power. That's all it is. So let's go through two examples here. I want to uh, anti-differentiate this first equation here. And if I have y, to, to show that I'm that the, my next step is the anti-derivative, I'm gonna have the integral sign of y, and I'm anti-differentiating with respect to x. So let's go through these three terms here. 2x squared, I'm gonna add one to the power and divide by that new power. So this will become 2x to the three, and divide by that new power. So pretty simple one there. Let's do the next one, 4x currently has a power of one. Let's add one to the power and divide by that new power. So this will become plus 4x squared on two. And in the next step, I'll simplify that fraction. Okay, third term, nine. This is an interesting one here. I like to think of this as nine x to the zero because x to the power of zero is equal to one. So this is actually nine times one, which is just nine. But if I think about it this way, I can just do this anti-differentiation step. So I add one to the power and I divide by that new power. So plus nine X to the one and divide by that new power. And over time, as you get confident, you probably won't need to do that division of one. Now, currently, just be careful here. I don't have a definite integral. I don't have my lower boundaries and upper boundaries on my integral symbol. So if we have an indefinite integral, in other words, no boundaries, we need to add this plus C here. So plus C. And the reason for that is, if I started at this second line and actually differentiated back to the first line, and I'll actually get rid of that because it's a bit confusing. If I differentiated back to the first line, if I differentiate a constant, it goes to zero. So there's nothing there. So I need to have this plus C here because there's potentially some sort of number. It could be it could be quite a meaningful number. It could be plus 1000. And if I differentiate it back to the first line, it would go to zero. So we don't quite know what that is. And uh, in some exam questions, you'll be asked to actually find C. And there's a few questions in the question bank on that. But the, basically, if you have an indefinite integral, so there's no boundary conditions on the, on the integral symbol here, you always need to remember to add the plus C. Now in the next line, we can clean up some of these fractions. Uh, the first one, it's just two on three. I, like to, I tend to like writing the fraction out the front. So two X cubed plus, uh, sorry, two on three X cubed. Four on two is just two, so two X squared. Nine on one is just nine. And I can just write nine X plus C. So there we have it. We have anti-differentiated this Y equation to get its anti-derivative. Okay, let's look at example two now, a little bit harder. And I'm actually gonna firstly, I like to rewrite fractions uh, in a little bit differently so I don't um, I don't have errors in my anti-differentiation step. I'm actually gonna rewrite this as one on five X cubed. I'm not anti-differentiating I'm, yet, I'm just writing the X cubed on five in a different way with a fraction out the front. Uh, the second term will be the same, minus three X squared minus a half X plus four. Okay, let's now anti-differentiate this. If I have fx, one way to write its anti-derivative is actually capital Fx. You could write that. You could also you could also do this as well. Both would be fine. 
Uh, but this here, if you have a capital FX, this is the antiderivative of FX. Okay, let's go ahead and do these, do these steps. In the first one here, I'm gonna add one to the power and divide by this new power. I like to write this as one on five, divide by the new power, x to the four. I, I like to write it this way so I don't get my fractions uh, mixed up. And then in the next step, I can simplify by multiplying these two fractions together. Okay, the next term is a little bit easier. Uh, I'm gonna add one to the power and divide by the new power. So this will be three x cubed on three. Uh, the next one, I'm gonna add one to the power. So x to the power of two divided by uh, two, or another way, similar to the first term, I'm actually gonna write it as two consecutive fractions. One on two, x squared. Let's just move this to the side a bit. Okay, now the plus four. Uh, you'll see here, when we have, say at the top here, plus nine, it always just anti-differentiates to 9x. So in this case here, I don't need to go through this step again. I'll just write this as plus 4x. So plus 4x. And again, this is an indefinite integral, so we need to add plus c. Let's now clean this up. This first term here, we multiply the two fractions together. 1 on 5 multiplied by 1 on 4 is 1 on 20. We multiply the tops and the bottoms. So this will be 1 on 20, x to the power of 4. Subtract. Now 3 on 3 is just one, so this will be subtract x cubed. The third term, we multiply the two fractions together, so negative a half multiplied by a half is negative one on four, so subtract one on four, and then plus four x plus c. So there we have it, we have anti-differentiated uh, fx function to get its anti-derivative, that's this line here. And that was a quick overview as to how to anti-differentiate terms. In the next video, we're going to use this skill to find areas under curves.